Hey guys, it's Bub here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Windows 10 clone known as Windows FX. Windows FX is designed for users who want to get into Linux but are more familiar with the Windows type desktop environment. The Windows FX distribution uses Ubuntu as a base distro and it has a cinnamon desktop which is heavily themed to look like Windows 10. When you boot off the live CD for the first time, the first thing you see is an introduction video to Windows FX. You can easily close out of this and then click on the install Windows FX icon on the desktop. The Windows FX installer looks like a combination of both the Ubuntu installer and the Windows 10 installer, however it looks more like the Ubuntu installer because this is an Ubuntu based distribution. Starting up Windows FX for the first time, we can see that the startup screen looks very similar, if not almost identical, to the Windows 10 startup screen. The login screen is very similar to Ubuntu's login screen and has not yet been themed to look like Windows 10. The only theme it has is having the Windows 10 default background. However, once we log in, as we can see here, this is where a lot of the Windows 10 themed things come into play. The first time I saw this Linux distribution, I obviously could tell the difference between Windows 10 and Windows FX simply because of the taskbar icon spacing. However, if you installed this Linux distribution on someone's computer who wasn't tech savvy, they would not be able to tell the difference between Windows and Linux FX simply because of how similar they look. Taking a look at the taskbar, we have power, our date, sound, internet, and all the tray applications as well as pre-installed Google Chrome, files, software, and Helloa which is your clone of Microsoft's Cortana. However, when you take a look at the start menu, things start to look very different from Windows 10. Instead of having the live tiles in the A to Z list, you have a categorized cinnamon-like start menu. Clicking on the settings or control center in Windows FX brings a very close replica of Windows 10 settings. We can see system, devices, telephone, network and internet, and everything that would generally appear in Windows settings. Clicking on one of these entries brings up a very Windows 10-like menu, and I genuinely think you could trick someone who is tech-savvy with this. I was curious to see how your telephone works, as your telephone is generally a Windows 10 thing only, but clicking on add a phone did not work. Even network and internet replicated the diagram of the computer, ethernet, and internet. However, just like Windows 10, there's still a control panel. Clicking on basic control panel brings up an Ubuntu-like system settings with Windows 10 icons already in it. The only thing I wanted to touch on in system settings were the themes. You can still change window borders to the basic cinnamon window borders, or you can change to basically any window border that's pre-installed, including this Windows FX dark theme. You could also change your default icons back to the standard GNOME icons, or like I said, any icon pack that is already installed on the system. Just like window border and icons, you can change the design. You can change it to the default Cinnamon one, GNOME, or pre-installed Linux FX ones. As we can see here, the start menu has changed, as well as the calendar. However, for the rest of this video, we're going to resume with the Linux FX 10 Dark. We can now take a look at Helloa, which is the alternative to Cortana on this Linux distribution. Helloa is not a voice assistant, however it does have options, such as find a file, where we can search your entire system for files, configure displays, which you can configure to displays easily from here. We can also do the initial setup of Helloa, which shows on the first boot of this Linux distribution. There is also this other string of text that has not been translated to English yet, because this is a Brazilian Linux distribution. Wine is supposed to be pre-installed on this operating system, so here we're going to try to set up Microsoft Edge for Windows 10, as well as the media creation tool. Opening Microsoft Edge setup brings up the Windows app loading screen, as well as Wine has to configure something. However, after Wine was finished configuring, nothing ever opened. The Microsoft Edge setup didn't open at all. The same thing happened with the media creation tool, it said Windows app loading, but then that would just go away and it would never open. So on this Linux distribution, as far as I can tell, Wine does not work. After a system restart and trying to run media creation tool again, we got this big black glitch in the back, but then it never opened. So I'm thinking that it was attempting to open, but it never successfully opened. And just to show that Wine is installed on this machine, I typed in Wine in the terminal, and it did show the command was installed. So I'm not sure what the deal is here, but it just doesn't work for some reason. The most convincing app on this distribution is probably the Home or Files app. It looks very similar to Windows 10's, and I think they went all out here to make this look exactly like Windows 10. From the identical icons to the identical left bar layout, everything just looks pretty close to Windows 10. 
Under my computer, we have desktop documents, music, pictures, videos, downloads, recents, and file system, which is your C drive. File system does not actually replicate the C drive, it just has all the standard Ubuntu slash Linux components inside of it. Now we can take a look at some pre-installed apps on Windows FX. The first app that we're going to take a look at is going to be Mousepad. Mousepad is nearly identical to Windows 10's Notepad, simply because of its simplicity and how Windows 10 doesn't really have a lot of elements inside of Notepad. We can save, and everything just works perfectly fine in Mousepad. If gaming on Linux is your kind of thing and you want to try to run some Steam games on this distribution, the Windows FX team has provided a pre-installed version of Steam. A preview of Microsoft Teams is already pre-installed on Windows FX simply because it is a Microsoft app and they could get it on Linux. You would simply sign in to Microsoft Teams like you would on Windows, and I would assume that you can join meetings exactly as you would on Windows 10. Since you cannot download Microsoft's Office Suite on Linux, the Windows FX team has replaced all the icons on the LibreOffice suite to match the ones on Microsoft. For example, LibreOffice Impressed, which is a direct competitor to PowerPoint, now has the PowerPoint icon. User Account Control, which is a feature introduced in Windows Vista, has been brought over to this Linux distribution. Ubuntu already had this, however the Windows FX team has changed it to match what it says in Windows 10 versus what it would typically say in Ubuntu. Even air messages have been replicated from Windows 10. Now that we've covered all the features of Windows FX, how stable is it and would I use this as my daily driver? Compared to Deep in Linux, which I did a video on a few months ago, I would actually trust this compared to the Chinese Deep in Linux. Even though Windows FX comes with some sketchy apps such as Zoom, I would trust this as my daily driver as long as I had a good antivirus and uninstalled some of the apps that were pre-installed, such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, AnyDesk, and TeamViewer. Now my big question is, why would a user on Windows switch to Linux when Linux is coming to Windows? That's right, the Windows subsystem for Linux is still on Windows. WSL2 allows you to run Linux GUI apps inside of the Windows kernel by emulating a Linux distribution. WSL also gives you access to the Linux terminal while still running Windows. So as I said, why would someone already on Windows switch to Linux when you can already get all of the perks of Linux on Windows using the WSL method. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do a ton of technology videos, including device restorations. What do you guys think about Linux FX? Definitely let me know your opinions in the comments below and if you would use this as your daily driver. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you all in the next one.